Welcome to The Ross Project, a conversation about life, entrepreneurship, personal development, family tech and marketing. My name is Ivan Temelkov, and I'm your host. On this podcast, you will gather 100% real, raw, and unfiltered life-changing advice to level up every aspect in your life and business and to help you reach your goals and dreams. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a doozy of an episode for you guys today. I have Shelly Hart with me today, and Shelly has been through 21 years of caring for her, for her husband, who has had three liver transplants due to his health, that had 69 cents in their bank account, had to file bankruptcy, and were receiving foreclosure notices on their home. Through it all, Shelly never gave up, and today is the author of Unbreakable Faith, owner broker of Heart Realty, and founder of Giving Heart, a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Shelly, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So just to kind of preface this a little bit more for listeners, I've been following you, like I said, you know, before we had to record for, I don't know, it seems like a couple of years on Facebook and just been fascinated with your story, you know, and, and I think it's mainly because it resonated so much with me. So let's let's take things back a little bit you know so 21 years you know i mean that's some serious commitment you know i mean most people i'm thinking in the united states where the divorce rate is uh, above 60 percent you know people get divorced for a lot of reasons but that's some serious commitment right so let's go way back and talk about like the beginnings and like how all this happened and uh, you know, with, with your husband also with the liver transplants and, and talk about, you know, how are you tackling this mentally? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so taking it back. So when Todd and I met, he was assumed healthy and three years into our marriage is when he got sick. So we've been married 25 years this December. Oh, wow. And, yes. And so, um, you know, he started just getting sick and not feeling good. And so when he went into the doctor, they thought it was his gallbladder. Well, it ended up being that he had PSC, which is primary sclerosing cholangitis. And mm -hmm. that's where the bile ducts of his liver started shutting down. And so the bile was backing up in his body, making him sick in lieu he needed liver transplant. So, you know, there were so many years and he worked during those times, but um, still it was like, I was a stay at home mom. Cause that was my choice at the time is said, you know, when I have children, I'm never taking them to daycare. <laughs> I'll do whatever <laughs> I can to stay home with those kids. <laughs> Like, that's my thing. Like, I wanted to be right. that mom. So, um, so, yeah, so that's kind of the beginning of our life. And then, you know, we've had two beautiful girls, um, Summer and Taylor. And it's like, I guess um, he started getting sick in 2000. The year 2000 is when he had his first liver transplant. And going through that experience, I can still remember that call I received from the doctor um, because he was at work at the time. And it's like telling me that he needed a transplant. And there's no, like, I don't know, like, I can't even explain what it, what the feeling yeah. was like, because it's like, you know, there's, at first they told him there's no hope for him. There was nothing they could do from his matter of time. And then we found a doctor who could give him a liver transplant. So, you know, those emotions just go run through you. And at the time, my daughter was three years old. Yeah. And so um, we ended up going to Iowa, to Iowa City, and we had um, a doctor there and he perform the transplant on Todd. And we lived in a hotel for nine months. Can you imagine? <laughs> wow. You know, as a fellow father, as you were talking about this is, is I just can't fathom the, the mountain of emotions that had to be just flowing, you know, and, and probably wondering like, you know, why is this happening? Right. Why is this happening to me? And and your children were very young. You know, I've got a four year old and a two, two year old myself. So I couldn't even imagine going through something like that. But, you know, somehow. So so what happened next? Like, How did you how did you start actually rationalizing all of this? I talked to my pastor is one thing I did. I have a very, mm -hmm. very strong faith and I believe that's what got me through it. Um, however, I was the same thing, you know, why is this happening to me? What if, what if, and that's all that I could think about were all the negatives, <laughs> you know, what if I lose yeah. my husband, you know, I'm a single mom and all these things. Well, anyway, um, I just, you know, I don't know, like when we had to live in that, um, hotel for nine months, it's like, you come to realize what's really true in life. You know, it's like, yeah. he's going through 
radiation treatments because, prior to his um, liver transplant because he had carcinoma at the time they found cancer in the bile ducts. So they were afraid it was going to spread throughout his body. So he started doing those treatments as well. And so he was in the bed basically so sick that he couldn't ever get up and do anything. And we're in a hotel room and I have a three-year-old thinking this is fun. <laughs> and you know, she's around playing and everything. And it's like, and we also had two yeah. cats. So we had two cats with us too. So I was yeah. just like, okay, you know, I guess I never thought about myself through that time. I always was that person who was just always, you know, I was the wife, I was the mom, I was giving to my child, I was giving to my husband. And of course I was totally stressed out because I didn't feel like I had anybody to reach out to besides the pastor of the church. And so he would yeah. come, he would speak. But, you know, um, as the years gone by, two years ago, Todd had his sec second liver transplant and within a few weeks time that liver rejected and he ended up needing a third liver transplant, which oh, no. was by the grace of God. <laughs> Cause yeah. Yeah. I just remember the doctors coming in, you know, six hours into the surgery saying, he's not going to make it off that table. I just need to let you know. And I said, no, he's going to make that off. You know, he's going to make it. Yeah. So, um, going through all of that, I guess, you know, and then we ended up having another child, um, through all of that. Yeah. And, and it's like, I don't know, you just, I guess as a mom and as a wife, you just are so giving all the time and you're just so busy. And it's like, yeah. you take, you don't take time for yourself. And it was when Todd went to go get his second liver transplant, he ended up going to Iowa and I still was in North Carolina and he was um, awaiting his second liver transplant living with his sister. And I kept my daughter here at school because I didn't want to, you know, Sure. My life. And so um, in doing that is when I found myself. I really started seeking who I was internally because for so many years I'd been taking care of him and taking care of my children that I just lost who I was. Yeah. And I felt like I was just at that low point, you know, um, because we had to file for bankruptcy, like you had mentioned. We had we were yeah. getting foreclosure notices on our home. Um but through my fight, I have to tell you that we ended up keeping that home and selling it for a profit. <laughs> That's so, amazing. <laughs> so yes, I was really happy, you know, to do yeah. that. Um, so I guess when I started finding out who I was and the self-love that I had, and it's always the love that comes from within, because so yeah. many people are going after, you know, the things in life today, you know, the material things and what's the next best thing. And, you know, I'm going to be happy when I have so many followers. I'm going to be happy when I have that new house or that new car. Yeah. And it's like, no, stop and enjoy your moment in your life right now. Because I can tell you from experience, that's what's important. You know, you know, uh, as you were mentioning all these things, there were a few things that sparked in my brain. And it's so ironic, actually, that you said uh, that you decided to find yourself really to focus on who you are, because for so many years, you know, you were so encapsulated with your husband's medical condition and also being a mother, also so being a mother, you know, being a wife that you ultimately forgot about yourself. And I was I was reading this somewhere. It might have been on Instagram and, and I think it was on Instagram that someone had a post that said uh, the most successful people are the ones that know who they are. Mm -hmm. And like, I got to thinking about that. And, and you were talking about like, you know, in this day and age that we're living right now because of, you know, with the pandemic, with COVID also, and, you know, just everything that the rest of the world is talking about the United States right now. And, you know, I could resonate with a lot of things that you were talking about because, you know, when you were talking about bankruptcy, you know, the reason I filed bankruptcy is because both of my children are IVF children. And so I basically pulled 40 K out of my ass and maxed out credit cards and took on loans because I said, fuck it, this is all worth it basically. But you were just talking about, you know, some things that I think a lot of people just worry about the materialistic things in life and they don't realize that, you know, God made you, you know, the way you are for a reason. And, um, you know, currently, I, uh, one thing that has really kind of made me really realize this even more is that, so 15 days ago, I started doing the carnivore diet, which has been like the most extreme thing I have ever done. You know, wow. some people have told me I hesitated to do it for two months. Uh, I have a friend of mine who's been doing it for over 200, 200 days. Wow. Like, you got to do it. 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 
you know, and um, I was like, no, you know, I've read too many bad things about this. It's an all animal based diet, no carbs, no sugar. Dude, I'm an Eastern European. I love my fucking candy, dude. I love my fruit. I love my watermelon, you know, I love my vegetables. Like, how can I ditch? I love drinking a beer, you know, at night socially. Like, like I can't, it's not that you can't, it's, it's that you won't. Right. And that's, that's what most people mistake. And so going back to, you know, when you were talking about like finding yourself, you know, you just got to have faith. Mm -hmm. Literally, you got to have faith. You got to have faith because at the end of the day, it's the only thing that you have. Yes. You know, uh, hope literally relies on faith. You know, hope is driven by faith, I believe. And, you know, I, I'm a man of God also. And, and, and I, I remember that time six years ago, as you were talking about like the things that were happening with your husband, I remember when, when a doctor told us, well, you have no chance of having kids. Like, what the fuck? Yep. Like, how do you process that? <laughs> like, for as long as I've known, I've wanted to be a father, you know? And now that I've found, you know, married for a second time, now that I've found a partner, you know, coming up on 11 years, actually, the next year that we've been together, like, what the fuck? Like, I, I can't fathom that. But another thing you mentioned is most people focus on the negative. Most people think of the negative because that's what's happening. And uh, I was listening to something that Ty Lopez was talking about because I just interviewed somebody else on the podcast that went from literally broke to a year being uh, Greece's first uh, multimillionaire, 20 years old, like literally sleeping on a piss mattress and living on 250 euros per month, not wow. US dollars, 250 euros, which is like uh, nothing. The, the, the comparative <laughs> is about 100 US dollars, which is like your grocery a uh, trip in the Midwest of America, basically, <laughs> right. you know, you got to pay utilities rent. So, you know, some things that, you know, we're talking about is that most people in America don't realize how good they have it. So you were talking about living in that hotel in nine months, but what you weren't realizing, because you were so focused on the negative, like, why is the bad happening, right? And that's negative, as opposed to, you know what, it could be worse. Mm -hmm. I've got a roof over my head. I've got my children next to me. I've got my husband next to me. But most people don't think about that. No. Literally, they don't. And I will tell you this, that almost every single millionaire, successful person I have ever met are probably some of the most humblest people you have ever met. Like they, they understand what it took yes. to be in the ditches, like yeah. in the trenches. And these are people that are driving the Ferraris and Bentleys and have multiple houses all over the world and just living on the top. Right. And so it was interesting you said, you know, finding yourself. And, and I want to latch on to that, actually. So what did that look like? After going through so much adversity with your husband being, uh, you know, uh, a wife, uh, a young mother also, like, what did that look like in trying to find yourself? Think and Grow Rich. That was my book. Really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. I read that book and it just changed my life. And I started watching The Secret and that movie was like, wow. <laughs> and yeah. it's so true because it's like everything that I was thinking of, that negativity just kept coming in and coming in. And it's like when I started changing my mindset, I think that was the big thing. And yeah. then I really started finding out who I was and what I love to do. And that's when I wrote my book, um, Breakable Faith. And I also started my own um, real estate business, my yeah. own real estate firm, and I started a nonprofit and I just took off. I'm like, this is all inside of me. And it just, yeah. boom, <laughs> it took off. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's real interesting, because that's the other thing I wanted to mention. I'm glad you elaborated upon this. I was uh, watching something on YouTube with Ty Lopez and, you know, Ty Lopez, one of the reasons I like him is because he pays attention to, um, the psychological aspect of business. Mm -hmm. He talks a lot about that. And in one of his videos, he was talking about how, you know, there's, there's these scientific studies that show how the chemicals in your brain get rewired when you start thinking positively mm -hmm. and the manifestation that happens behind that. So, you know, if you're thinking positively, you're, you're far likely to manifest a positive outcome and that's why I like, can think and grow rich, which I've read a part of that book. <laughs> I'll finish reading it at some point, you know, because uh, that's one of my problems. I'm not a book reader. I'm a digital guy. So I'm like stuck on my phone and social media most of the times. Right. But that was so interesting that you said is mindset. You know, when you when you really start thinking differently and say, you know what, I can do this. I will do this mm -hmm. and we'll do everything possible because one or two things will happen. You'll either succeed or you'll fail. When you fail, you really haven't failed. You just learned that you didn't do it right. 
exactly. basically. There's another quote out there that goes something along the lines of, I've just found 10,000 ways to fail or something along those lines. It might've been like an author or some sort. I remember coming across that. And so it's interesting when you, when you rewired your, your mindset, you know, you started your, your, your real estate business also, then you started your nonprofit also, which let's talk a little bit about that giving heart. What is that about? So Giving Heart is a backpack ministry. So every weekend um, we supply backpacks for the children in elementary schools, middle schools, and high schools in our area. And so right now I have my own um, elementary school that I take care of. And we do backpacks every Thursday morning and then we bring them to the school and they deliver them to the kids on Friday. And so that way they don't go hungry over the weekends. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. You know, we need, we need a lot more of that in this yeah. world. We really do. I. Yeah. I'm one of those people that I purposely ignore the news. I purposely ignore like literally any post I see on social media that starts off with COVID something or, or, or like, you know, right now human trafficking, child trafficking is so bad. Yes. Uh, I remember seeing um, a video in one of the groups that just gave me chills uh, that had to do with child trafficking. And, and apparently there's an investigation that's going on, you know, at the, at the government level with that. But like, you know, there's just so much negativity right now. Mm -hmm. There, there literally is. And, and one part of me is like, am I just being ignorant to this and like avoiding <laughs> it, you know, like, because I don't want to address the reality of, because that's another thing is recently that I've talked about is reality. Reality is your reality, my reality, and the reality, right? right? Because that's how most people perceive everything that's happening around them, whether it's in your life or in the world. And I realized, you know what, the reason I'm avoiding it is because it's negative. It's toxic. It's not good. Like, and my feeds are full of people being opinionated about this and that and, you know, everything that's happening. And I get it. The world has a lot of problems. But the only thing you can do is in some form or fashion contribute and do your part. Because, you know, there's always going to be somebody out there. And that's what I think you decided to do with Given Heart, right? Is say, you know what, I'm going to do my part to contribute to society. Yes. You know, to do something positive. Yes. You know, of course, you're always going to have somebody that's going to be opinion and say, well, why are you doing this and get all political? And it's like, you don't get it. It's just, it's just a, a positive movement. That's right. it. Right. It's doing good. And I feel like, and I've talked about this in the past, I feel like, you know, humanity is going to cause its own demise in due time. If we keep going at the rate that we are, we're going to self-destruct. Yes, I believe we'll, that too. We literally will. I mean, we're sabotaging our own lives. And, you know, as a father, too, that really has gotten me thinking. I mean, I've got a four-year-old son and a two-year-old daughter, and I'm thinking, their generations are going to be so fucked up. Mm -hmm. Like, and I don't even know what that looks like because technology is one part of it, as we know. I mean, I, I see my daughter at two years old. She can maneuver YouTube Kids app on the phone better than I do. Right. You know, I'm just like, holy shit. And then my son, he's practically hooked on the tablet. So I'm like, they're going to live in the digital world, which means that they're going to be exposed to even more of everything that's happening in the world. So how do you infuse positive guidance? Do you just do your best? I mean, and that's, my, that's a question from me to you as a parent, because I'm always curious of like, as you know, and this is another thing I refrain from on social media is talking about any kind of parenting because you're always going to have someone who's going to come out and be like, yes. I'm the expert, right? It's like, no, you're not the expert. Just because you chose to parent your kids that way, that's great. You know, don't force feed your own opinion. That's right. one of the things I think I've refrained from is like too many people are force feeding their parental opinions as right. opposed to just, you know, being very non-judgmental and non-biased and just speaking up. So, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, with Given Heart and what you're doing, like, how do you see the future? And how do you see like that morphing into, you know, tomorrow? I think you're so right with social media. It's just going to explode for these kids. And like what yeah. you were saying about parenting, I was going to mention to you, everything is a choice. And I used to tell my kids that all the time, you know, well, I still do, <laughs> but yeah. it's like, everything is a choice and you know, everything has a consequence. So if you're yeah. going to go and you're going to make that choice and that has that consequence and you end up in jail or you end up somewhere, you're staying there because you're going to learn. I'm not going to just come get you. Yeah. So those are things I would teach my kids. And then talking back about like, what do you do with positivity now with your children in this day and age? And it's like, 
I always feed positive things into my kids and I'm always writing that positive note to my children and I'm always feeding positivity into them. I guess that's just what I do, you know? Um, sure. I've, noticed, I've noticed that it's been successful with my oldest daughter. You know, she's got 1 million followers on Instagram. She's done yeah. it all organically. I mean, she's amazing. She's doing so good today. And it's yeah. like, you know, my youngest daughter and, you know, here's another thing I want to mention is she never wanted to go to a big public college after she graduated. And I was so for that. And so many people were like, why are you know, like you said, they all have opinions, you know, yeah. I think if you go to college, it should do this and that. It's like, she wanted to be an esthetician. Like that was her passion. That was her dream. I'm like, then do it, you know? And yeah. I was like, so for that. And I think that's a big thing with parents today. I feel like they need to let their kids do what they love because as you and yeah. I know when you're doing what you love it's not a job it's giving <laughs> you know what I mean like you're just yeah. happy you're doing it every single day yeah that was be some of my advice I'd give to parents today but um anyway so she, you know like I said she's very successful in doing what she loves so my second daughter she is going to be a freshman this year in um, high school and so she's big into singing and writing and things like that but she yeah. I feel like um, feels judged a lot. A lot of kids, you know, I don't want to post this video because I'm afraid of what someone's going to say. And I'm like, Oh, yeah. stop. <laughs> you know, no, it's, it's like <laughs> you're absolutely right. And one thing I wanted to mention when you were talking about um, kids is I, I feel like uh, with social media specifically, there is too much judgment on the younger generation. When in fact, what I've realized is the younger generation should be allowed to be more expressive and creative. And be able to share that out there because that's that's ultimately how they use social media for different reasons. Right. You know, they yes, they use it to you know uh, communicate with their friends also, but for the most part, you know, they they use it to to express themselves. You know, and we've seen, of course, you know, all, all the chaotic stuff that's going on with TikTok now and potentially being banned in the United States. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, <laughs> right. it's it has gone that political, literally. Um, and so I agree with you. I agree with you. Is this that, you know, and in fact, there's been so many times that like my son who's four or my daughter that do some things that I'm like, holy shit, like, where did you learn that? Yeah. Like, it's good. It's impressive type of things right. that makes me go like, like my son still likes to read books. He loves, you know, anything with planets in the Milky Way, you know, and I'm just sitting here. I'm like, shit, I don't remember really reading a whole ton, <laughs> ton of books. I, I truly hope he retains that. And my wife right. has probably bought about 20, 30 or more books that I know of, you know, and, and he shows interest in that. So I agree with you. I kind of want to shift the conversation a little bit because as I was going through some of the notes on here I'm, that I had notated is I know uh, self-love and never giving up is, is really a core component of your entire life the way you really, you know, look at everything, you know, your life, your businesses also. Let's talk about self-love a little bit, you know, because I, I don't think pe most people realize what that really looks like, right. you know. So what does that look like in your eyes and how have you practiced that to become happier? Right. Gratitude is huge. Gratitude. Every single morning now, I write 10 things I'm grateful for. And afterwards, I just like close my eyes and say, thank you, thank you, thank you. I think mm -hmm. that is one big thing. Um, finding my love, like I said, from deep down within your soul, like, who are you? Like, what do yeah. you love? What do you believe? You know, um, also boundaries are huge because I used to just let everybody into my life. I used to be friends with everybody. And it's like, yeah. I've cut so many negative people out of my life. And I think that's a huge thing for self-love because it's like, you don't want that negativity involved in your life. Um, also, I feel like um, just listening also to positive things every single day, whether it's a podcast, whether it's, you know, reading a chapter in a book or whatever that is, just sure. like really work on your development and work on yourself and just be happy, you know, be happy with where yeah. you are in this moment in your life and just love yourself, you know, don't yeah. be so hard on, oh, I've got to lose 10 pounds or I've got to, you know, do X, Y, and Z. It's like, no, you should be happy with where you are and who you are. Like stop listening to all the voices out there because there's so many and everybody, like you said, has an opinion. Yeah. You know, um, that's amazing that you said that because you know, it got me thinking too, and I'll elaborate a little bit upon this is there's two things that most people want to accomplish in life. Well, there's two different types of people, I should say, in life. One is they want to be all known 
for, you know, hey, this is me and I got this. And they want to be in the spotlight constantly right. because in some part, I think it gives them some, self, some sense of security mm -hmm. by knowing that they're acknowledged because let's face it, it's our human nature to be acknowledged. We don't like being loners. Nobody does. Whether you're male or female, you just don't like to feel isolated. You like to be acknowledged. And there's the people, the second type of people that are like, I'm okay with being me. I don't need to be known by the rest of the world. Right. As long as I'm doing what makes me happy. As long as I'm, like you said, great, grateful. As long as I know what I want. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I think I've spent 40 years figuring out what the fuck it is I want. <laughs> right. I'll tell you right. that. And you know, I know I mentioned about the carnivore diet that I've been doing now, and that has really sharpened my, my, my mental acuity. Uh, it's also contributing to the physical, obviously, best shape in 20 plus years that I've ever been, you know, and I'm only about two weeks in, but, but the mental aspect of this, because those were the two reasons I started doing this. And mind you, as an Eastern European, I ate shit for most of my life, like candy and steaks and hamburgers and all kinds of shit. Yeah. Uh, I think part of having a high metabolism and being a, uh, a former smoker from the age of 16 to 26 for 10 years, got away with that. But now at 40, it's interesting you said gratitude because very much, so you, very much like you'll wake up in the morning. I'm like, okay, I open my eyes. My heart is beating. Okay. Mm -hmm. Today is going to be a great day. I've already won. I fixed my bed. That's a major win. You know, I see my kids. Oh, that's definitely a fucking win because right there's such a core component of my life, you know, that they're my why and purpose behind everything, you know? So, and that's what most people don't realize. They don't understand that they already have everything they need. Right. But so many people always want more because they're swayed by society. Right. They're swayed because society says that, well, you need to be a lawyer. You need to be a doctor. You need to make over six figures per year. Fuck all that. You don't need any of that. Honestly, I'll tell you this. And I'm telling you this because I'm a college dropout, barely get graduated out of high school. And I've done some shit that most people that have more education than me have never done. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, no, don't necessarily need a formal education. You want a formal education for a career? Great. But you know what? I've made more money <laughs> than getting a formal education and I have zero debt. Yep. But you know what, society, I was reading something else, you know, society, I think, you know, leads you into becoming mediocre. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the things that are happening in the world actually are outdated. Right. I mean, everything is outdated, you know, and that really translates to not just in life, but also in business. Because let's face it, most people are not married past a few years, at least in the United States. It just doesn't happen because the divorce rate is so high. Not to mention is that it's irre irreconcil irreconcilable differences. I spit that out. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because it's such a fast-paced changing world. It really is. I mean, you've been married for 25 years. You know, having to pivot and, and work at a relationship is difficult. Not because easy. times are changing. <laughs> yes. Oh, and by the way, you have a husband who, you know, has had an ongoing medical condition for the vast majority for that entire duration of your marriage. That's why I said that is some serious fucking commitment. Thank and people you. don't understand. Like, I mean, I, I, that's amazing. It really is. And so that's why I asked about that because there's so many emotional roller coasters in that, you know, oh, yes. I mean, in, in the marriage with kids and, you know, and you've had a lot more to deal with, but I think in part it, it was a test. Also that, that I see, because we talked about how most people focus on the ne negative that mm -hmm. happens in their life as opposed to this is happening for a reason. Right. right. And I need to figure out why. So I rise up to the occasion. I have to rise up to the occasion. That's my only choice and do the best I can. Because mm -hmm. you know what? In the reality of things, don't try to control what you can't. Exactly. You know, and the inevitable will happen. I could literally walk out of my house and get hit by a drunk driver. It could happen. Mm -hmm. It could happen. But so many people worry about that. Right. They worry about the inevitable. They worry about trying to predict what's going to happen as opposed to <laughs> living their life and focusing on just being happier. You just, know, and yeah. you don't need a pile of money. You know, you don't need materialistic things. In fact, I know people who have all of that. And they're the most unhappiest, honestly, because they never really spent the time to figure out who they are. In yeah. fact, they, they were so worried about how society would perceive them. 
you know, this is maybe part why I never really became huge into, you know, uh, fitness really until a couple of years ago is because I thought that too many people in the fitness space were doing it just for, you know, likes and comments and, and shares and all of that. It was for materialistic reasons, you know? Right. So what you don't know is what you don't know, but I agree with you. So anything else that you want to add in terms of self-love? I mean, I think that was powerful. And, you know, uh, so you said every morning you write things down, right? Yeah. And yeah. that's a part of your, of, your, of your gratitude. How do you, one other question I wanted to ask you, how do you reflect on your wins? Good question. How do I reflect on my wins? Celebrate, <laughs> you know, um, sure. get massages. That's one thing that I do for myself. Um, I get massages twice a month. Awesome. That's what I do. So um, just do things for you, things you love to do. That's yeah. what I do for my wins. And I think that's really important that you celebrate yourself because it's a big deal, you know? Yeah. It's a big deal. You know, deal. the reason I asked that question is because I used to be one of those dumbasses that when I would win, and it's usually, Oh, client paid their invoice on time. Woohoo! Let's go buy. Let's go buy something materialistic. And honestly, that's what I did actually last year when I got my iWatch. Splurged nine hundred dollars on a fucking iWatch. I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, I even did. Do you really need that? Like, did you want that or did you need that? <laughs> right, right. And I, I do make, I do make those mistakes. That's why I asked you about your wins because, I, yes, I think it is important to celebrate yourself because. And in business, I've tried to practice this because you work your ass off. You really do. You put in the time, but you don't do it because you know money's coming from it. You do it because you genuinely give a shit and you enjoy doing what you're doing. Exactly. Like I keep thinking of um, Warren Buffett and I've watched a whole ton of his videos, you know, that talks about when you, when you, when you have that connection to what you're really passionate about, you get up every day and you're excited about it and you know that like me, 10, 12, 14 hours that I've been doing for four years now, grinding away right. at this business that was in the red for three years and fourth year, finally, finally in the positive. It's just, you have a much sense, a much higher sense of gratitude. Mm -hmm. And that's why you need to celebrate that because yeah. I didn't used to celebrate wins. You know, mm -hmm. I was so worried about, fuck, you know, a revenue <laughs> comes in, got to pay bills. And by the time you pay bills, there, there's nothing left over because let's face it as an entrepreneur, you know, it's very hard to start stashing money away because you have to be constantly investing also on top of it. So after you invest, it's like, what's really left? Oh, and by the way, when you have two kids and I know you have, you know, <laughs> right. a, a freshman and, and, and well, both of your kids are in college, right? Um, no, one is out. Well, and one is out, but one is a freshman, in, right? In high school. Oh, in high school, in high yeah. school. So, yes soon to be going down the college yeah. road, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, the reason I'm mentioning it is this. So I think it was yesterday, me and my wife were shopping at, at Sam's Club. Or was it over the weekend? And um, we checked out and um, uh, the lady walked up and uh, we had bought formula because Sam's Club has, uh, my daughter still can't drink milk. She's two. So we still give her like the, the milk-based the milk formula also, just at nighttime to have bottle a bottle. Right. And um uh, the lady walked up and said, hey, you know, we, we, we take those coupons. They look like checks. My wife's got a shit ton of those for formula, but she didn't know that Sam's Club accepts them because they don't accept them at the regular self-checkout, oh, wow. you know? So you have to actually go through the regular lane where someone checks you out, right? And then as we checked out and we're, we're moving away from the kiosk, she's still talking. She says, you know, I don't have kids, but I've heard that kids are very expensive. Wow. Like that was the response. Like at first, my instant reaction was like, lady, like, are you fucking kidding me? Like that, that's what I wanted to respond. But then it really got me thinking when she said that, that and it goes back to an article that I read on Forbes many years ago, that the, the average cost of raising a child now from like zero to 18 is about half a million dollars, like in terms of clothing and food and shelter and Oh yeah, I am that guy that pays 25k per year for daycare because otherwise I wouldn't get shit done and you know I have a wife that still works a full-time job, you know, right. so it really got me thinking. I'm like, okay, if people are worried about cost and raising children, they would never have children. Right. But people have children and they figure it out. Right. Because that's really your only option. So that's why I mentioned that because like I just remembered that story this past <laughs> weekend when this lady said that to me and like my my old self will be like turned around and said something smart to her honestly yes. 
but I just like <laughs> held it back. And it was, it was almost kind of rejuvenating because I kind of had this epiphany about like, it put things into perspective. Right. Right. You know? So, um, Shelly, I know we could totally keep jamming uh, on this episode. Lots of great info that you shared. But before we sign things off, you know, how can people connect with you out there? Throw out some websites, social handles, you know, anything you can think of. Yes. So I'm on YouTube. I just started my channel. So I'm super excited about it. Yay. Awesome. (laughs) Yes. So if they can follow me on there, that would be great. Um, Shelly Hart. I don't know if um, there's a way you can put that link on here somehow. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, yes. Um, and then I have Facebook, which is Shelly Hart, S-H-E-L-L-Y, and then Hart, H-A-R-T. And Instagram, Shelly Hart. Everything's Shelly Hart. <laughs> awesome. So, yes, I'm on Twitter. I'm on it all. So, yes, just look me awesome. up. Awesome. Shelly, I want to thank you for your time. I've truly enjoyed this conversation. Ivan, thank you so much. I appreciate you, too. <laughs>